This is Becky Schultz, editor of Equipment Today, and I'm here with Bart DeHaven, national sales rep at Cado, who will be sharing insights about the company's battery-powered excavator models. Cado currently has two models of battery-powered mini excavators in its fleet, the 9VXB and the 17VXB, which was showcased for the first time at ConExpo 2020. And I'd like to point out that these models were back-to-back -back recipients of the Contractors Top 50 New Products Award, sponsored by Equipment Today and ForConstructionPros.com. These war awards are based directly on the feedback of construction equipment owners and users. So there's clearly a lot of interest in these machines. Bart, can you share some of the factors you see as contributing to the interest, not only in these models, but in battery powered equipment in general? We're seeing it move more toward the battery from the tethered electric excavators that we've made in the past, just from a user standpoint, where they're more user friendly, rental customer and or the end user, it makes them a lot easier to move around. You know, they don't have to, uh, use a fork truck or something like that to move the machines because they are battery powered and they'll run and the run time too on, on those is, you know, you're looking at roughly about eight hours, which is a normal working day for either machine. We've seen it move that way. You know, I don't want to say here recently, but you know, the market is growing for sure. You know, people aren't wanting to, um, I guess like Tesla moved to a battery powered machine where it's easier maintenance wise. There's not as much maintenance required with uh, those machines as there are with a diesel powered machine. So it makes, you know, their maintenance cost is gonna be a lot lower. The issue right now, I think with everybody is the initial cost is a lot higher. Just, you know, if you compare anything battery powered right now to a gas or a diesel operated machine, whether it be a car or, a, or an excavator, it's, um, you know, the battery cost is, is a lot more expensive, but it, over the long haul, you know, hopefully that cost should come down just to be made up on the maintenance side and the longevity of it as, as well. Sure. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the differences between the diesel and the battery powered models a little bit right. later, but I'd like to, to kind of take a step back and look directly at the 9 and 17 BXB, and they are both battery powered. Can you talk mm -hmm. about what the power system entails? And you, you mentioned that you get a full eight hours on, on a full charge. So both machines are lithium ion battery powered. So there's a battery pack and, you know, a motor running the hydraulics on the machine. So both machines have the same power as what a diesel model does in, in the same size. So with the run time being eight hours, you know, the charge time is usually eight to 12 hours. So they charge it overnight and they get the full eight hours back the next day. With both of them too, the availability, I guess, to, to purchase a fast charger. For a little bit more money, you can buy a fast charger and they can charge, fast charge the machine in about two and a half to three hours and get another eight hours out of the machine as far as the run time goes. So it makes guys, especially a lot of the guys that are using these type machines, or most of the guys we're seeing them are indoor demo type guys where there's no emissions, you know, where they're working in a hospital or a pharmaceutical plant where they can't have any emissions in the food processing plants and those type places where they can't have any emissions, you know, to contaminate the air or the working environment. Plus it makes it a lot safer on the workers as well because there's no emissions on those machines. No, the 17 VXB is the newest model in the yes, battery powered family. Can you talk about the distinctions between it and the 9 VXB? And so the 17 is has an operating weight of about 3,900 pounds. It's got a seven foot dig depth. The big difference other than size, the nine is only about 2,000 pounds and uh, digs about five foot deep. One of the major differences between the two is the 17 is a pilot control machine. So it has a pattern change valve. So a lot of the operators, you know, they may have grown up operating under one style and the little nine is only in that one style. So with the newer guys coming on, you know, these newer operators are used to playing these video games and stuff. It may not be as, as easy for them 
are easier for the older guys to switch to a different pattern. So the, the 17 has a pattern change valve where it can be used for whichever type of A to F pattern is what the industry standard is calling. One's A, one's F. Track O, back O is kind of how they're set up. But that way they can switch. You know, if you can switch that pattern so it's easier for the operator to use. What about other features that are designed um, to make this machine features, more user-friendly? Um, the 17... The 17 has more dig depth and is a bigger machine, but it also has auxiliary hydraulics, which they both have, but the 17 comes piped to the end of the stick so they can run a hydraulic thumb, a hydraulic hammer, an auger, all different types of hydraulic attachments on the end of the 17. The nine has the ability to, but the amount or the options for attachments are a lot smaller. You know, the nine has its own, I guess, place being that small that it will get into a lot of places that the 17 won't the 17's got a wider stance and both of them have an expandable undercarriage so the nine you can uh, with the tracks all the way in and going to about 27 inches wide so you can walk it in your office door if you wanted to okay use it in, in, in your office i mean it's it's small enough that it will but the 17 being a little larger for larger jobs you know where guys are doing, Evan pointed out too, it makes the 17 a lot more stable. It gives it a lot more stability with the tracks are all the way out. And both of them are zero tail swing when the tracks are all the way out. So with a gentleman's working in, inside a building, he's not worried about swinging around and hitting the tail on the side of the wall or the building itself. The bigger features right now, the 17, is it's got a lot more breakout force too. So it's got a lot more digging power too. It, in the diesel version, which the battery machine in itself actually has a little bit more than what the diesel version does. But right now, the, the diesel version of the 17 has the most breakout force of any machine in the industry in that size category. So it's really been a really good machine for us. That is impressive. And can yeah. you talk a little bit more about some of the differences between um, the diesel and the, the battery-powered model? The diesel machine... More the weight, the 17 battery, just because of what it is, is a little bit heavier. It weighs about about another 500 pounds to compare to the diesel. So the diesel weighs 3,553 pounds, and the battery machine weighs 3,915 pounds. So, but as far as other than those two major differences, they're pretty much the same. So if the guy's used to running a diesel type machine, the battery's not going to be any, you know, anything that he, there's a learning curve with. You know, if he's run an excavator before, it's it's going to be really simple for him to get on and use. No, you talked earlier about um, the emissions and mm-hmm. the fact that this machine is able to get into certain environments that are not conducive to diesel power. Right. What about other factors such as noise level? How does that all impact yeah. it's, it, the feet or that's, the applications? Well, that's one thing that we probably need to put on a spec sheet. And I don't know that we've ever measured it because you can't hardly hear it run. So there, I don't know what the decibel level would be compared to a diesel machine. But if you're talking and it's running, you can't hear it run over you talking. That part of it has been really good, too. The emissions part of it has been really there's a lot of jobs now that, you know, OSHA is regulated, especially indoor jobs. If it's a diesel machine operating indoors, you know, it has to be scrubbed, but they also have, have to have a certain amount of ventilation just for the worker's safety. Well, that's another added cost that the job or the general contractor has to bid into his job. But with one of these machines, you don't have to worry about that, you know, because there is no emissions. It runs on its own and it doesn't produce any kind of toxic fumes coming out of it. And that's with the nine and the 17. It's been really good for us. Now, what you had mentioned before operating costs, talk a little bit more about owning and operating the cost of the the Um, battery powered. Yeah, with the diesel machine. So, you know, and and every roughly 200 hours, 250 hours, they're going to have to service that machine. So they're looking at buying not only the cost of the oil and the grease, but the filter cost. You know, some machines, depending on whose it is, you're probably looking at a couple hundred dollars or more every time they have to service it. And that's if they're doing it themselves. You know, if they're buying their own filters, I'm talking about the, the general contractor. If he's buying his own filters, you know, it's still going to cost him 
not including the labor cost of the gentleman that's doing it for him. So there is a lot of added expense to us. With a battery machine, other than charging it and keeping the components greased, which that's going to be a little bit of a cost, you know, you're not spending that two to five hundred dollars in cost to service that machine every two hundred hours. You know, as long as they keep it greased about every day and it's going to run, you know, as long as they don't tear it up, I guess. Hopefully, I mean, the battery packs that we're using now, they've tested them about 10,000 hours is what they got out of the runtime. So I've not seen them as, I'm sure they're out there. I've not seen too many with over 10,000 hours, even in a diesel machine. So I would say very impressive. And I have a feeling that we've really just kind of scratched the surface on all the advantages. Maybe a disadvantage, a part of it is, is the, you know, just the initial cost. When there's something new like this, and I think that's, there's always, it, you know, you take for Tesla example, you know, no, nobody bought a Tesla five, however long it was, 10 years ago when, when they came out with them. But now you see a heck of a lot more of them on the road than you did five or six years ago. So I think it's growing. I don't ever think it's going to take the place of the diesel machines, but there is a market for it. And I think the market itself is growing just you know, even if the guy's not using it indoors, a lot of people don't want the noise, you know, on job sites, especially if you're working in some of these uh, neighborhoods, you know, if mom's at home, especially with COVID and stuff, and she's trying to homeschool her kids right now, she doesn't want to hear that excavator beeping and creating that diesel engine lug in her, in her window, you know. So with one of these machines, you She's not going to have to worry about that. She may have to keep the kids out from the window watching it, but not not hearing it run, hopefully won't be bothered. If someone wanted more information about the battery-powered models that Cato is mm-hmm. offering, how would they find that? Well, they could go to our website, which is uh, CottoCES.com, or they could give us a call here. We've got folks here that can answer any questions, not only myself, but Evan and Doug and Jenny and Mr. Smith, the gentleman who owns our company, you know, they can call us here at 1-800-538-1447. We're usually about, depending on what day, eight to five, sometimes a little later and sometimes a little earlier, Monday through Friday. And, you know, we'd be happy to help them out any way we could. Well, thank you so much, Bart, for joining me today and for sharing information on this. And we look forward to seeing what comes next for Cobb. Thank you. Appreciate it.